Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today we're going to talk about Aldrich, the Lunard Marshal, not the other Aldrich, but lets you do ridiculous stuff in combat. But that's a different deck for a different day. Anyway, Aldrich here um, is uh, Papa Smurf, share and share alike. If uh, anybody has anything, then everybody else gets it. Now, protection is not in here. I do have a couple cards with protection just because it's relevant protections, but. Flying, first strike, death touch, double strike, haste, hex proof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, sculpt, trample, and vigilance. I kind of took this as a checklist, <laughs> but I don't have like skulk in here or menace, but I believe I've got everything else represented. I may not have hex proof, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, obviously, this is going to be a creature heavy deck. We are going to so let's uh, let's go through the creatures here. Everything I tried to get everything to contribute to the cause, you know, because that's what you do when everybody has anything you have. Everybody else has. You gotta. Everybody's gotta contribute. Now, White Knight does contribute to first strike. He's also a two drop that is really really good. Angelic Overseer. Contributes flying and probably hexproof because we do have a lot of humans in here, such as the fabled. Now, this guy, he'll be the first to go once I get a better creature because he contributes double strike and he's a human. Soldier's not really a thing in, in the deck, but nah, I, I don't know. It, it just feels like if you can't target that heroic ability, it, it just feels like you're losing value. So, Dragon Stalker has flying and protection from the most popular creature type in the format. So, it's not bad. Purity has flying. He contributes flying and, you, you know, pretty much makes you immune to being burned out. Knight of Metal Grain contributes two things. First Strike and Lifelink. Doing more than, more than her part. Uh, Elite Inquisitor also contributes First Strike and Vigilance, two things. Now, the Aerial Responder is a team player. He contributes Flying and First Strike and Vigilance to the cause. Now, this is three. You just don't get three a lot. Now, I don't have Anachroma in here, but that's probably what I'll get to replace the, the Fabled guy. Celestial Crusader does only contribute flying, but it also, you know, helps the team in other ways by making them bigger. Flying and lifelink. And this guy contributes indestructible. Now, granted, he gives it to your commander, and your commander gives it to everybody else. But, hey, he's worth it. The Skirmisher, Double Strike is at a premium. I mean, it always has been. Flying Sunblast, it also doubles as your board wipe, so, you know, that's not bad. First Strike, and it it's not hard to get this ability, especially early, at well, any time of the game, really. It's not hard to get that free planes out of it. Silver Knight, of course, the White Knight's long-lost cousin. Silver Blade Paladin, Double Strike. Knight's Exemplar. All you got to have is one other knight, like Silverblade Paladin or the Mirror and Crusader or Mirror Entity. I mean, you know, it's not hard to get. Now, do have some things like Sun Titan does contribute vigilance. It is a big fatty at 6'6, six, six. but you, you know me, I just can't play with Sun Titan without playing with the Burnished Heart, because that's, you know, seems good. Twilight Shepherd contributes twice, Flying and Vigilance, First Strike and Life Link. Well, check her out. Flying, First Strike, Vigilance. I even am playing with the Sarah Angel. Now, I'm playing with this art because I've got it foil, but, you know, she does contribute Flying and Vigilance. Both of which are kind of also now these guys. I really kind of like the bestow creatures. The uh, it contributes flying and first strike, but it also kind of has a double life. 
you bestow it on your creature, and if that creature dies, it jumps off and becomes a dude on its own. So you're going to keep that flying in first strike. Same way with the Eidolon. You know, it just has double strike. Just has double strike. Now, Herald of the Host does all kinds of things for the team. You know, flying, vigilance, I'm going to attack everybody. Sun Striker has two abilities. And now we're going to get into the the creatures that are, are, are just in here to be in here. Now, Blinding Angel contributes flying, but she also steals that combat phase. It's one of the most annoying creatures to play against. Love the Blinding Angel. Hasn't seen a whole lot of reprints, but I like it. The Windborn Muse is kind of your propaganda that, or to Ghostly Prison, you pay one more for for a flying 2-3 body, but it does contribute flying. Now that's a whole lot of flyers in the deck. I mean, whole lot of flyers. So Radiant just seemed kind of like a natural fit there. Uh, it, it also works for every flyer on the board, so that's neat. Uh, as hard as it is, I did not run the Storm Herd. I don't have a whole lot of life gain, but it's hard for me not to run Storm Herd in any deck that I'm running Radiant because it's, you cast Storm Herd and you swing with Radiant and win. I mean, that's typically the way that turn sequence goes. Now, Stubby Doll shares Indestructible. Now, Indestructible is, it doesn't come around a whole lot, Stuffy Doll is pretty neat. Shares indestructible. Now, because of that, I, I mean, it's I am running white, so I had to run the Pariah with the Stuffy Doll to get that little shenanigan going. Now, Sarah Avatar is the only creature I have in the deck that does not contribute anything to the cause. You don't give, she just takes. But you know what? Hmm. Man. What a creature to have awesome abilities like Trample or Flying or Double Strike or Lifelink. God, Lifelink. Anyway, a lot of people, when they build him, they go for the equipment route. Now, I've only got like six equipment. Um, Haunted Cloak shares three abilities, all of which I would love to have on the Sarah Avatar, as well as the Swiftfoot Boots. I mean, giving the team Hexproof and Haste is never bad. A Chroma Sword is going to make, you know, one of your creatures amazing. Hopefully it's the Avatar, but, you know, it ain't got to be. Locks it on Warhammer, does a little bit of a life gain thing, and Trample Lifelink. I mean, you know. Gorgon Flail is my only instance of Death Touch in the deck, because, let's face it, we're playing Mono White. And uh, all my collars are in use. Now, look, let's talk about this Stuffy Doll thing. Stuffy Doll shares in, in, Indestructible. Now, just in case you don't get the Stuffy Doll, we've got Indestructibility that you obviously want to play on your general because you want him to stay alive so that everybody can keep, you know, sharing the wealth. So, share and share alike. you got to keep him alive. Now, as a redundant copy, Shielded by Faith, Shielded by Faith, actually, you it it's a I think a little better because you can put it out there on a creature you don't want to die if it ha happens that you are you know gotta pay thirty seven mana for your general again or whatever. Anyway, you, you can move it when you play your general. That being said, with the whole indestructible thing, I kind of it kind of led me into my last equipment there because. I'm getting fuzzy. Oh, that was really fuzzy. World Slayer is, because uh, let's face it, this is pretty much a, I play dudes and turn them sideways, or turn them straight, since they're more than likely going to have vigilance. But anyway, it, it's a simple play dudes, attack with dudes kind of deck. And that, uh, a lot of times, just is not going to win. Simply because you, I mean, there are combo shenanigans out there. All decks have them. And sometimes it's hard to win with just a creature based deck. So, World Slayer kind of tips that edge in that, hey, guy, you know, all my stuff's indestructible, right? So, 
let's nuke the world and just keep doing it. Because if you can get this off once, it's going to be real hard for them to, to get an answer for any successive attacks that you have. Now, well, let's see. Let's look at these four enchantments here. Um, we might as we're playing heavy, heavy creatures, so we might as well be getting a bonus off of them. Armored Ascension. We're playing mono white. This can get there. I mean the, and it it contributes to the cause. It does contribute flying to whatever. So here again on your general. I mean it, it's it feels like low hanging fruit because well honestly it is, but it's mono white. It's good. Through conviction, almost seems redundant, and I may actually take it out. Um, but just the blanket double strike and lifelink, you know. Granted, the blanket enchantments I tried to stay away from, but this one was just too good, and this was another quarter bulk rare box find. Uh, Oblivion Ring is, of course, my last one. Got a little bit of ramp in the fact of uh, Pearl Medallion, Gold Mirror, because I, I figure Gold Mirror, hey. Why not, right? He's a two mana one, one taps for white, and probably has a stupid amount of other abilities. Mindstone and the Cold Steel Heart. It's not a whole lot of ramp because let's face it, we're not we don't have a whole lot of high end stuff. Brave the Elements is gonna keep our dude safe, but there are going to be times when you just have to absolutely kiss the world goodbye. And that's why we faded retribution at seven man. A lot of people diss it, but you know what? At instant speed, at instant speed to wipe the board of creatures and walkers. There's been many times I have wished I had this card, and it is totally worth the seven mana, especially when it matters. Day of Judgment is a little more affordable, but you know what? They can regen, which is not really a thing that a lot of people do. I am running the one steel shaper's gift. Just in case I do get the setup for the World Slayer or I need that Gorgon Flail or what, you know. Gift of Estates. Uh, the one shot land tax. Absolutely weird that the one shot land tax costs half as much as actual land tax. Anyway, that shows you how good land tax is. Uh, removal in the form of Condemn, STP. And unexpectedly absent. Can uh, I love that this is an instant? You can do this mid combat. And now, granted, you probably ain't targeting their general because they'll just put it back in the command zone. But a a, uh, a combo piece, you can do it mid combo if something requires tapping or, or whatever. A lot of times, there's a small window in there to, to where you can, if you can just remove one piece of the combo, it just breaks down. And you can just bury it. Uh, and you know you've got X turns until you can have to deal with it again. Mass Calcify seems like, I mean, you know, it, it's another seven mana spell, but it does destroy everything that ain't yours. You might lose a, you know, well, Burnish Heart's not going to stay in play anyway. You're just going to sack it. But anyway, you see what I'm saying. It's, it's one-sided wrath, and typically seven mana is about right for a one-sided wrath. And our last card is, of course, Blinding Light. Now, here again, this is, I mean, it hadn't seen a ton of reprint, but it is, I think, an amazing card in a mono white deck. You can just, okay, who do I want to kill? A lot of times, this is three mana to kill target player because they just don't have any blockers. Doesn't work on a lot of decks, you know, artifact creatures and artifact tokens and whatnot. But that is what I have got for Mr. Odrick. I do appreciate you watching. Y'all let me know what you think. If anything is like to see. We're getting closer and closer to that 200, ain't we? Anyway, right now it is time to shuffle and cut. <laughs>